On July 7th, a 12-member volleyball team departed St. Kitts for Antigua and Barbuda to take part in the Eastern Caribbean Volleyball Association Championship. They returned to the Federation yesterday and we have with us Coach Rick Swan to tell us what happened. Welcome back to Good Morning SKN, Coach Swan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. You are certainly welcome. It's our pleasure indeed. For those non-sports persons out there, Coach Faze, Coach, Coach, sorry, Coach, please explain how the volleyball tournament is played and how it is decided which teams come up against each other. So uh, the, the, the teams, there are nine countries represented. Uh, so the teams are, are ranked one through nine based on uh, previous results, uh, which was a little, a little off because of the pandemic and not being able to play the last few years. Uh, and so some of the, the, the last tournament didn't have all the teams represented. Uh, so uh, you're kind of going in not really knowing exactly how the rankings are gonna, gonna fall, but uh, they had two pools. They had one pool of five teams and one pool of four teams. Okay. Uh, we were in a five team pool uh, and so we, uh, we played the other four teams in our pool, uh, and then the team of four played themselves. And from that, you, you came out seated uh, from each pool and you played a, a cross bracket to the teams okay. in, in the, from the other pool. Okay. All right, so, well, first of all, we're glad to have you back. Uh, nice. Secondly, I was joking with you earlier that you made it to work and two of our guys who <laughs> traveled with you did not. So guys, you, I'm gonna forever hound you on this because they were part of your team. Yes. Uh, that being said, uh, who were we competing against in the first round? So uh, the, the first round, uh, we, we opened up and uh, played uh, Granada, uh, who was a strong team. Uh, and that was our first match uh, internationally for some of these players. It okay. was the first time they've ever played a really any type of organized uh, international competition. Okay. Uh, and uh, we lost to them in three, uh, but I felt we played very competitive. Good stuff. Um, and, and the guys fought hard and, and, and did well. Uh, the next match was against Angola, and uh, we came out and got a victory against them, mm, uh, which was exciting. And, and you know, for them to get their first victory and and uh, the hard work that they they were that they had put in got it paid off with with that. Uh, came back and played Bermuda, uh, and that was our second match of the day. Okay. Um, and I, you know, we just we didn't have that fire uh, in that match and struggled a little bit. Our uh, consistency wasn't wasn't there. Um, and then turned around the next morning and played in Antigua and Bermuda or Barbuda. Uh, and, uh, you know, we actually, we, we won the first match, first set against them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the team that won the championship. Yes. Uh, and, and so to be able to, to compete against them at that level and, and uh, push them a little bit and make them have to really play their best to, to beat us, that was, that was fun. So we won the first set, uh, lost the next three, uh, and then had to turn around and come back, you know, a few hours later uh, and play Dominica. Uh, and beat them in a five-set marathon, mm. um, which was very exciting. Uh, I think our players were running on fumes at that yeah. point. Oh. It was our fourth match in about 26, seven hours. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, and they left everything, they emptied their tanks and gave it everything they had and we, we pulled it out in a five-set thriller. So, mm -hmm. ended up going two and three in the tournament. Okay. Uh, finished seventh. Uh, so, uh, I, I think, you know, yeah, we would like to, the optimist in me says, hey, we would have liked to have done better and, and finished higher, but I think the realist says, you know, these are young guys that, you know, it was their first time for most of them getting this competition uh, at this level. Uh, it was a great lear learning experience for them. So, yeah, I was pretty excited the way things went. So congratulations, first of all, on everything that you would have accomplished. How many matches do you play in a day? Uh, typically, you play two matches a day or okay. one match a day. Okay. Uh, we were kind of scheduled to play one match a day, uh, and then one day we were going to play two, but the, the schedule changed right before we left here on Wednesday. We were supposed to play a Wednesday night match. Uh, that match got moved to Saturday. Okay. So we didn't play Wednesday and ended up playing one on Thursday, two on Friday, two on Saturday. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 
All right, so I'm curious to know, obviously you said this was uh, the first time some of the players were competing internationally. In terms of the preparation, both mental and physical, going into this match, uh, what was that preparation like, and do you think you could have ever adequately prepared them for that? You know, that's probably the most difficult challenge that we face. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can't, you know, it's really hard to prepare to say, hey, you're going to play five matches in the next you know three days uh, and so trying to prepare that and, and, and play against competition at that level is is really difficult uh, but I think the, the great part about it is now the players get an understanding of wow this is what it's going to take yes. uh, and we need to do uh, we, we need to change some of the things that we do as, as players to prepare uh, to make ourselves stronger more fit, ready for that type of, and you know, it's kind of like running a marathon, you know, you get there and all of a sudden here's the marathon. And, and so, yeah, we, I think it was good for them to, to see that experience, uh, but it's, it's hard to, to replicate that exact experience until you get in there and can do it, you know, weekend after weekend after weekend. Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me because not having that exposure, of course, you can tell them, and you can train them for yes. it. But when they get there and they realize, well, this is what I have to compete against, mm -hmm. then that's a whole learning experience yes. that now they have. So the next time that they go out, they'll probably be able to tap into that a little more. Yes, yes for sure. Yeah. Right, great. So who scored the most points to St. Kitts and Nevis, and who was the most valiant player of all? Um, well, I, I think, uh, you know, our, our top scorer was Azil Bell. Okay. Uh, and, you know, he, he did some amazing, amazing things on the court. Uh, finished tied for fourth in the tournament okay. with uh, as a as a top attacker. Okay. Uh, so uh, Zenday Richards was also one of our top players, and Naj Hendrickson was was another top player. Uh, and they uh, they competed, and and they could play. I think uh, at that level against some of the top players mm -hmm. in the tournament. Yes. Uh, and kind of the core of the team as we move forward and, and continue to grow and, and learn and uh, excited to see what they're going to be able to do down, mm -hmm. down the road. Nice. I can feel your excitement because yeah. I'm just thinking, okay, uh, obviously when it comes to competing internationally, as you said again, uh, some of them were quote unquote newbies. They get that experience. We're talking about the training. Is there a long-term plan for the sport? and its development here in St. Kitts and Nevis that would see us producing athletes at that level? Uh, definitely. Uh, and that's kind of one of the goals of me being here uh, as a coach to start with the grassroots and develop uh, volleyball and get it more exposure to it, uh, to, to let you know, uh, youngsters understand it. There's an opportunity for, for you to be part of a team uh, to travel and play internationally. Uh, we'd love to see teams compete uh, and not only on the indoor side of the game but also on the beach side of the game and, and as we've talked before with St. Clair Hodge and Sean Seabrooks who've qualified for the Commonwealth Games uh, on the beach uh, uh, side of things and they'll be competing in that at the, the end of July here okay. uh, in England and, and so yeah, it's, it's, it's getting that word out that there's some really cool opportunities that you can experience as a volleyball player uh, and being part of the team. So I want to know, Antigua won overall. Correct. St. Lucia got second. Correct. St. Martin got third. Correct. I have a friend in Antigua, so I was following it very closely. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think Antigua had the home advantage? Definitely. Oh, okay, okay. Definitely. Hmm. Because hmm. they know the court, they practice on that court all the time. Okay. And they have the home fans. You of know, the place yeah. was loud, and, and uh, <laughs> it was a great, great environment yeah. for volleyball. Exciting to watch. Uh, and having that home home court advantage can be a, a big bonus. And there was a lady there from St. Lucia. She was just running all around. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. I was, I was. She was getting that crowd fired up for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so imagine what we can do when we talk about the tournament that's going to be here. Correct. Yeah. Well, they Correct. play in England, but when we have matches that are here, I imagine, yeah, for sure, Home for sure. Clear. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the team and its composition. Uh, how many of them have played together before, and uh, potentially how often did they practice, and/or were they part of your youth program as well? Well, 
you know, played together before. I think there's maybe five of them had played together before in a, in, in a youth international competition. Uh, and then our two vet, our two senior uh, players uh, had played together before. Uh, but other than that, it was a totally new team. Uh, you know, we had our youngest was 17 years old. Our oldest was 45. Uh, so, uh, but for the, for the most part, it was, it was all very young uh, players because we went 40, 45, 40, and then 21 and under. So a very youth-laden team. All right, well, that's good to know. There's still hope for uh, Cortensi and me, I imagine. We're not at 45 yet, so you never know. We have five years to practice. <laughs> we, we'll see. We never, we never know. Oh, my God. All right, so Adrian Constant of the Daddy Strikers in his remarks to the press recalls a match from 2016. And have any members of our team been playing as long? Uh, just the two. Just the two. Yeah. Wow. Okay. How challenging was that, or rather, how fun was that? Uh, for you to watch that dynamic of new players coming together, having to learn to work as a team? You know, it, it was exciting to see them grow up on the court, you know, in the process of three days. Uh, and, you know, not knowing really what to expect. You know, when we got there and as a coach has only been working with them for a few months, uh, you know, it's, 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 it was, you know, very entertaining in one aspect. Uh, but to watch them just progress, you know, really moment by moment uh, was something that uh, I, I'll remember for a long time. Uh, and, you know, as they learn and they become more consistent uh, in what they're doing on the court, uh, there's a lot of promise down the road for, for what, what's going to happen with, say, kids volleyball. I'm glad to hear that. So with that said, what's next for the team? Uh, rest, oh. you, you know, uh, for sure. Uh, we're going to focus a lot on, on beach over the next couple months uh, and try to get the players to play as much beach as possible, which will, you know, you know there's definitely a different game than indoor, uh, but beach will also let you uh, work on different skills and ball control that you really need in the indoor game. So uh, we do have some opportunities uh, on the beach side for some of these young players to, to travel and go play uh, some beach uh, events, international events. So we'll, we'll focus on that uh, and then also continue to, to play and train indoor. Uh, we're looking at doing some um, uh, competitions here uh, on the island at the Dome and uh, put together some leagues mm -hmm. where they can get some experience uh, uh, playing against each other at times. Uh, so we'll do that uh, starting in September. Okay. You mentioned beach. Beach, you're playing beach volleyball, you're fighting with the sand. How does that help when you're on the smooth floor? Uh, it's a lot easier to jump on the smooth floor. Uh, and Indeed. you can jump higher. Yes. Uh, but when you're playing beach, you have to deal with a lot of outside elements. Okay. Uh, you have the sun, yes. you have the wind, and there's a lot of wind <laughs> here on the beach. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, you do have the, the, sand. Un, the sand, which is... Uh, the instability of it. In, yes, instability of the movement, you know, so you have to deal with that. So when you actually tra train it on the, on the sand, you deal with that, then you go indoor, and it's a lot easier because you don't have those, oh. those outside things that are taking place. So, so you get the endurance outside to bring that inside. Correct. Okay. Got Correct. Oh. All right, looks like you might have an assistant coach, coach. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm so, practicing. <laughs> right, I'm curious now, because obviously you're talking about um, developing the sport. Uh, is there room for younger athletes or people who are interested to benefit from your coaching? And if so, are there training camps or any sessions that you want to let the public know about? Uh, yeah, the sports department uh, actually this week is having a, a camp uh, out at the Dome this morning going on right now. Uh, for it's a kind of a, a golf and uh, volleyball camp that's taking place from 8.30 to 12. Uh, and then we also do uh, clinics, uh, which they're, they're getting ready to end right now, but on the, uh, next September and October, we'll start uh, youth clinics uh, that we'll have at the Dome. Uh, usually those are on Saturdays, but we're looking also maybe doing some stuff during the week. 
Uh, and so if anybody's interested, they can go uh, and contact uh, the St. Kitts uh, Amateur Volleyball Association website, uh, Facebook page, and reach out. Uh, and we can keep them informed of activities that are taking place uh, so that they can come and start training with us. All right, it's that easy. That Absolutely. easy. Absolutely. So are we going? Yeah. That easy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, we're, like I said, we're going to mention some leagues, and, and uh, we're, plans are in the work to start a high school uh, league this fall uh, so that we can get more exposure at the high school level as well.